All right, welcome back to Elden Ring Lost Guide Part 17. Today is Kaled. If this is the first time you've watched any of these videos, then we recommend you watch the video linked in the description. If you've got any tips of your own, stick them in the tips, comments. Uh, the, or the, the pinned tips, comment. But otherwise, we are starting from what church is that? Smoldering Church. Now, if that would, if that was your first time visiting Smoldering Church, there'd be a couple of cookbooks in there and a drawstring lightning grease on the way over this wall. The small town there is Rockview Balcony, and there's a couple of items floating about there, but since we've already been to those, first thing we're going to do is head down the road towards this tree, um, the dead tree on the uh, overlook of the earth tree, and the first thing we're going to go fight, I assume, is the putrid avatar. Yes, uh, so if you want to... If you know, if you want, if the bits that we were at is like the Smoldering Church, you can go back and watch uh, Limgrave. So I think it would be part two of Limgrave, and um, that'll get you up to speed with that. I know it's a little bit awkward. We did just quickly pop into Caled because there's pretty much no resistance. Uh, but otherwise, we drop down. I think we've got a rune arc off that branch, and these guys are um, Erd -tree, Erd Tree Guardians. Yes, air tree guardians. And I actually don't have the drops marked down. Uh, I can go get they them. They can drop their full armor set, as well as the guardian garb in full bloom, which gives you a health boost. That can only drop from the ones inside Altus the Royal Capital. And they can also drop the guardian sword spear, as well as, I think, a couple of consumable items. So here we are at the putrid avatar. Now, ideally, we want to have blood flame blade on. Uh, we don't have blood flame blade on, and that was a mistake. But the footage for the fight was good, so just pretend that your sword is on fire. But when you're fighting these guys with the ass, the biggest thing is that ass slam attack that fires out all the rot. You want to be rolling into them for that, and you won't roll under them, you'll actually roll around them and behind them just because of how it works. There's, a, there's still a collision under it when it's in the air. So what you want to do is every time it attacks, you want to roll into its attacks and then get like maybe one charge attack or two lights in. And uh, as you can see, we rolled into that attack. I didn't roll under it, but I was able to avoid all the rot. Oh, there we go again. Yep, perfect, because the rot sprays out in a cone in front of it. And it does do a lot of damage, and you don't want to get rotted by it. But what we're doing is we're rolling into them and around them because we're locked on. So that's pretty much the method for these guys. Now, they are insanely weak to fire. So if you have any fire damage that you can put out, that is what you should be doing. Uh, particularly if you have a uh, flaming strike, that's really, really good against it. If you have any fire pots that you can make, then you can chuck a bunch of them at it. Um, now, if it does this attack, um, now you're going to do a better job than me. But when it does the attack where it where it fires its thing into the ground and it brings up all those little glittery things, you want to be running away, uh, zigzagging, and um, and then only then, when that attack's done, you can run straight back into it. But, uh, aye, that's pretty much it. Just uh, do what we done there, and you should be having an easy time. We get some uh, cracked tears for that, and now we need to run to the end of this branch. I think it's a cracked pot, right? It is a cracked pot, right? Correct. Yes! Well remembered. Um, the two tiers we got, I believe one of them is a boost to your stamina. It's either stamina regeneration or increased stamina temporarily. And the other was the flame shrouding crack tier. Now, that means that in future, if you're using fire damage against them, and you should be, um, if you slap that in your physic tier, in your physic flask, sorry, um, your fire damage will be 20% stronger. Now here we are in the catacomb just behind where the earth tree was. Uh, yes, so um, what one is this? It's a uh, minor earth tree catacombs, I'm sure. And I think this is an imp one. So there's going to be a bunch of imps in here. Um, and I think this is the catacomb where the boss has an amazing cheese method, actually. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, so, so you'll get when, to see that in action, which is fun. Yes, yes. Uh, so when it comes to the imps, the way to beat them is guard counters. So get your shield up, let them hit you once on the shield. Oh, I mean, Aslam is also amazing against them, right? But, strictly speaking, um, if you don't have Aslam, I mean, everybody's going to have a shield. So get your shield up, let them hit you once on the shield, hit R2 just after it, and you'll do the guard counter attack. That does a ton of poise damage. And then you can go for the, the counter hit. Now, watch out for that sneaky bastard right there. Yeah, haha ha, Miyazaki. They're, they're always hiding behind a corner, right? So just be aware of that. 
I will also say, actually, um, honestly, fuck imps and their ambush strategies. Hate them. Yeah. But I will say that um, you can, in fact, do a guard counter if you block with your weapon. You don't have to block with a shield. So if you're, oh. say, two-handing a big greatsword or something and you block an attack with it, you can press the heavy attack button, R2 on PlayStation, um, and you will still perform the guard counter move. It's a, yeah, it's important to point out, actually. So now we're sending this lift up, and actually there's some shit under the lift, which is a common theme that we'll find in these uh, dungeons. But the imps, for the most part, they can drop the fort hatchet, they can drop the fort greatsword, which is what this guy can drop. Uh, they can drop uh, various imp heads, so the cat, fanged, long tongue, and wolf heads. Uh, they all give you a little stat buff, depending on what you're wearing. Each each different head gives a different stat buff. Uh, so pick up that, that glove wart that was just outside the doorway, just to make a point. Uh, they can also drop smoldering butterflies, glitzstone butterflies, fogger blooms, mushrooms, and smithing stones. And in this room, there is some glove wart and a golden seed. Aye, so... Probably explain, actually, that this is the first time we're really encountering Scarlet Rot as a status it's effect. True. What it's Scarlet true. Rot does is it's an incredibly potent poison. I think over a duration of something like 60 seconds, it will deal 120% of your HP, meaning it forces you to heal at least once. Um, now, if you have the health regen flask on, grab all the glove water you can see, by the way, but if you have the health regen flask um, available in your physic, that will mitigate the damage somewhat, but won't cancel it out like it will for poison. Um, your best bet is just to pop to Leonia, make sure you grab speak of speak of the devil, by the way, one of the uh, imp heads. Yeah, available that, that was actually a pickup, um, it wasn't even a drop, but apparently they can yeah. drop the wolf head, so you can pick it up and they, they can, can drop yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So this guy um, has glowing eyes, and the glowing eyes enemies can drop, I think it's five times the amount of normal runes they drop? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, five times. So um, there is actually a farming method. Um, if you're short on runes, there's a method we will show you way later in the game. And if the enemy you farm for that has the golden, uh, the golden eyes effect, it can drop something in the realm of about um, 75,000 souls on kill so so now we yeah. are back where we were if you so basically if you come down here it will lead you back to uh up above just before the drop down and then you come back down here into the drop down to do the boss now this boss you have to fight two of the watch the the cat golem guardian things but for some reason if you throw crystal darts at them, it fucks with them and they start attacking each other. And at this point in the game, you have a ton of crystal darts. They're falling out your fucking arse, right? So all you got to do is launch crystal darts at both of them. You'll see a little um, visual thing like sparks or whatever. And uh, yeah, then they'll just start fighting each other. So uh, yep, see, there's a sparky thing. And uh, this boss, which can Bang. actually get absolutely fucked. <laughs> I know. Now, this boss could actually be ever so slightly difficult without this method, but uh, it's actually completely nothing. I remember telling out. you about this method, and I I have the audio um, <laughs> Do saved you? Of, you, of you reacting to that. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was really funny. You uh, you were basically like, no fucking way is that a thing. <laughs> so, um, I we get pod. the um, we get the pumpkin head uh, Ash of War, which is interesting because uh, that's probably the biggest singular guy that you can summon uh, via the ashes. So we're gonna head back yeah, to we'll... the Smoldron Church, um, and uh, I. Uh, we're just, so this is again where we started we're heading back up the hill if you were to uh, take a hard left there that would take you down the hill to the air tree avatar that we fought and subsequently the catacomb they were just in but going up the hill over this wall takes us back to rockview balcony we've already picked up the items here uh, so just search about there's a couple of things and um, we can level up now we're currently still on our um, leveling vigor and endurance grind so uh yeah we're going to 45 vigor 40 endurance so get to that ratio of stats however is the most comfortable way 
but we are heading east and we're gonna go onto this little rock here and you can see there is a scarab and we're gonna try and get the scarab we, we don't want to we want to approach the scarab from this side specifically because it will be running away from us however if we were to approach the scarab from the uh the road side it's gonna run into the middle of those uh, dogs and we do not want to get swarmed by those dogs which is why we're killing the scarab via the bow here and then we can jump over the carriage avoid the dogs entirely because fuck them and uh get the greatsword absolutely fantastic weapon um i think it goes without saying it has s scaling and strength when heavy infused um can accept all the best ashes of war ground slam uh lion's claw etc it's generally great, and if you're doing a strength build, you can come straight here. As you saw from Rockview Balcony, there's also no resistance, so you can just run straight here, pick it up, and on that, we are heading to this little campsite here. Here's the first of the monstrous crow enemies. Um, you really don't want to tango with this thing, as you can see. Very aggressive. Did a decent yeah. chunk of damage just by stepping on us. Um, we still don't have the method for... Um, taking those out efficiently we don't get that until considerably later on in the game but head over to the edge of the cliff here and grab the somber smithing stone what is that a four i think it's a four yeah yeah now, somber interesting smithing enough, stone four from the edge of the cliff the dogs are annoying but they are manageable the crows however are despite the fact that this is definitely where we are supposed to be in the game the crows are disproportionately far more difficult than anything else to this point in the game uh, and i think they're also disproportionately more difficult than they should be uh so yeah just just avoid the crows there's literally no benefit to fighting them they don't drop anything cool they are just a giant a literal gigantic pain in the ass but heading east from the grace uh there's this uh mass tomb so we're going to pick up the runes here um this is one of the less annoying mass tombs because it's just a bunch of slow enemies but now we're going to quickly make a little detour to Dragon Barrow, which is over this little jump here. Now, this area is, is, as soon as you're here, significantly higher level. Way later in the game. However, there's some stuff here that we can grab because there's zero resistance. Because admittedly, this area is quite sparse of, like, enemies or anything like that. So we're just going to grab the map fragment down here and then I think we go to the merchant i think we do that it would make sense um the reason we would be visiting the merchant which we'll find out if we do in a second is because the merchant sells something called the beast repellent torch now while you have that in your hand enemies like dogs and even the big monstrous dogs not the crows the crows don't care about it <laughs> um but the dogs, the monstrous dogs, the basilisks even, um, they will not attack you while you have that in your hand. They won't even yeah. come near you in most instances, which is very, very useful. The basilisks especially, because not only do they not come near you when you have the torch out and they're kind of affected by its radius, they don't even shoot the, uh, the poison or like the death mist at you. So it's incredibly useful for certain parts of the game. So it's just worthwhile picking up the Beast Repellent Torch here while we can. Uh, we can also sell any runes we have if we need to, you know, pay for it. Now, he also sells uh, what's a Ritual Pot. There's the Beast Repellent Torch there. He also sells the Samurai Armor, but we already have that, so fuck it. But, uh, yeah. So sells an infinite number of Serpent Arrows as well, so if you wanted the stronger Poison Arrows, he's the one that sells an infinite number of them. That's true, that's true, and now you have access to that, and it's very, it's definitely recommended going and doing that, because not only do you get the map, you get the merchant for literally zero resistance. So now we're heading into these runes, we picked up a fire grease, and in the southeast portion of the runes, uh, there is this um, la set of stairs, and this leads down to, I think it's a double pumpkin head boss, so what we're yeah, going to do is we're going to take our physic flask we're gonna put on golden vow and then we're gonna summon the imps because they're just so damn good and they're still pulling their weight this far into the game although yeah, they, this they, is... are, they are taking a pummeling i will say yeah this fight is a, a little bit of a battle of attrition because given that they're pumpkin heads if you hit them in the face 
um, and they do dip their head towards you, they take massively reduced damage and stance damage. So really what the imps are aiming to do over there is get a couple of hits off on the other pumpkin head while we deal with one of them, and then even if both the imps die, as long as this one is dead or nearly dead, it's just fighting a single pumpkin head, which is something we've done many times leading up to this point, and it's never really difficult. Um, but as you can see, exactly what I just described. The imps are dead, but now we're only fighting one of them. Uh, but because we're fighting one of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do this. Get your ground slams in, get your riposte, and that's you, that's the boss. Now, in this little room just after the boss, you are going to find a chest, and in that chest is the visage shield. I it is knew it was big. a shield! Fuck! I, I was like, I was, uh, I was like, <laughs> literally, like, I do not know what this item is, but I was like, I've got a feeling it's, it's a shield of some sort. Ugh, yeah. Okay. Um, it basically is one of the faces of these big flame chariot enemies that we're completely ignoring. Um, yeah. And its Ash of War is unique. It's called Tongues of Fire, and it's basically a flamethrower. It's pretty great. <laughs> so we're following the road that goes through the ruins to the south here, and now we're grabbing this grace. So that's there's a grace to the north of the ruins and a grace to the south of the ruins. Uh, yeah, that's... Very close by graces, I suppose. But uh, now there's like one item that we're going to pick up before we start moving back west, I think. But up at this hill with this crow, there's a big soul packet. Now, this this guy can actually be a, a colossal pain in the arse to avoid doing this. This is actually the first footage of me doing it. Uh, be normally the second recording is the main footage that you're seeing. This is actually spliced in first footage. Let's see if you can find the, the gap where the splice is. But um, right there, that's the splice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the second footage of that, that crow was really giving me a hard time trying to get away from it. So just be careful. But now All we're back. For a golden rune. Literally. But now we're back at the, the north grace, which was at the the carriage with the greatsword in it, we are going to head west along the, uh, I guess it's sort of along the cliff face, kind of, uh, and up at that cliff is where Rockview Balcony is, but we're at the Forsaken Ruins, and we're going to grab this golden rune first, uh, there's a few enemies we're going to avoid here, more crows, so actually it just pays to grab that just now rather than later. Uh, I think there might be a couple of Trina's lilies around there, pick them up. And the item in this chest is the Sword of St. Trina. Now, this is a sword which scales slightly with intelligence, as well as dexterity and strength, and its Ash of War is Mists of Slumber, and what that does is puts a little cloud of sleep in front of you, so if you have no other means of inflicting sleep, as long as you have the base, strength, dexterity, and intelligent requirement for that weapon, you can use it to inflict sleep on your enemies, which is pretty fucking useful. So this is south from the ruins that we're at. Now, we quit out and loaded back in to get rid of the crow aggro but south from the ruins under this branch there is a scarab that we just killed there for a somber smith and stone four now we're heading back up i guess this is the opposite side of that hill see that crow that was there that was the one that we that we uh, picked the the golden rune up from but now we're heading back west and uh, there's a mass grave and then i think we are on to gale tunnel I'm not mistaken, but I probably uh, am mistaken. I don't know if we do Gale Tunnel first, or if we go grab the Invisible Scarab and the Grace first. So we'll to get find to out, way, I suppose. We drop down from this part, and um, yeah, there we yeah. Go. It looks like we are doing the tunnel first. Now this tunnel is kind of unique in the sense that you see these these two enemies at the top of this uh, descent here. This is normally where you'd find a lift um, in a mineshaft. This one yeah. does not have a lift, meaning once you drop off this ledge, this is a point of no return. So after watching this uh, footage of the guide, um, if you determine that you're not in a position where you're ready to be taking this cave on, uh, don't do it yet. Because if you do do this, you have to run through the whole thing to get to the next grace and the uh, the free exit. So 
what you saw there that we were fighting was Redan soldiers. Uh, not the foot soldiers, these are Redan soldiers. The foot soldiers are the, the lesser of these guys. But they, like the other guys that look like them, can drop their equipment. So that's the Lord Sworn Straight Sword, the Brass Shield. If, if they're holding these weapons, so that's the Lord Sworn Straight Sword there. Uh, the Brass Shield, the Lord Sworn Shield, which is the great shield that these guys sometimes wield. Uh, then they can drop the, the armor set, which is the Surcoat, the Helm, the Gauntlets, the Greaves. And then they can drop a bunch of other shit like Smith and Stones, Bolts. Uh, the War Pick, if they're holding that, they can drop that. We can drop the heavy crossbow, smoldering butterflies, master ranges, and aye. Now, in this room is uh, an octopus. There's a bunch of smith and stones fours in the wall. But there's the cross naginata. Now, that is one of the best weapons in the game. Now, you can probably kill that octopus if you want, or just avoiding it because we can't be arsed killing it. But the cross naginata, go on. Cross Naginata, very, very long, very, very fast. It's a spear-type weapon with a unique moveset, um, but it can be power stance with other spears, so you can still get access to that um, amazing power stance moveset. It has innate bleed, it takes infusions well, scales really well with dexterity. Um, yeah, when Tony just said it's one of the best weapons in the game, he was massively understating just how good that weapon is. I have done complete playthroughs with it, I have used it in PvP, I have used it in PvE, it is great everywhere. And there you go. So hopefully you've been paying attention to all these uh, Smith & Stone 4s that are in the wall. Uh, as you can see, this is kind of why we went to um, Runestream Precipice first, because clearly we're getting the correct uh, upgrade materials for where we are, and there's a lot of easy upgrade materials there. Now. In addition to the Redan soldiers, there is also the Miners, which, as we went over before, they can indeed drop... Uh, the Pickaxe, Explosive Stones, Explosive Stone Clumps, uh, Poison Stone, Poison Stone Clumps, a uh, bunch of... all the different... Smith and Stones relevant to the point in the game that you're at, uh, Gravel Stones, and uh, Cracked Crystal Stones. So you saw there when we dropped off the ledge, we immediately turned around and there was a Radan soldier crouched and we ran over and killed him straight away. That's because he has a little horn and if he blows it, he will alert the miners and then you have to fight three enemies at once instead of just one Radan soldier. Yes, yes. So. Ah, friend. Iron Jar, Alexander. Now, this is what I was talking about in a way earlier part where I said the next time I find him will be in a cave in Caled. This is that cave. Um, he thought he was stuck in here by opening that door and speaking to him. You have freed him, and the next time we will interact with him will be at the Radan Festival. After we've been and killed Makar, which you shouldn't have done yet. No, you should not have. But, interestingly enough, that this, uh, this tunnel, or whatever, leads back to Limgrave, which is interesting because it's one of the very few tunnels in the game that actually feels more integrated into the map rather than just being there with an end, you know? It actually feels like this leads somewhere, technically, so that's interesting. I kind of wish... What's kind of nice that. about that, by the way, um, is that this one and the Ruin Stream Precipice both do that, link two major areas together, and for both of them, the boss is a magma worm. This is true. So... This is a different magma worm, which should, in theory, be easier than the other one that we for in Ruins from Precipice. So, say, exact same technique though, we're putting on our Physic Flask, we're putting on Golden Vow, and then we are just get summoning the imps and then getting ass lambs in behind its hind legs. Uh, you want to avoid the front portion of this thing quite a lot. Uh, also, don't get hit with any of it when it's in this kind of charge attack obviously avoid its lava but seriously do not get hit by this thing's attacks because they hit fucking hard but it's easy enough to avoid them um, your biggest issue is getting greedy essentially because a lot of his attacks have like a kind of like a big range in front of it or whatever so as long as you're getting your hits in and then repositioning uh, you should be good so like you know maybe get in a flurry and then don't try and go for like a second um, full stamina bar Unless you, you know, it's, it was knocked down like this. But yeah, Aslan puts in the work against this thing. Instead of going for the counter on the head, you're probably better off just swinging into it to get the bleed damage. I think that's probably better. But otherwise, just that was actually the first time you got hit during that fight. Uh, was it? Yeah. 
Yeah, you still had the bubble shield until it hit you just there. Oh, uh, wow. Your reward for killing that, by the way, is the Moon Veil. It's a katana that scales very well with intelligence. Its Ash of War is effectively unsheathed but better, because it's unsheathed and it also has a projectile attack. Yeah, it's a very, very good weapon. Um, now, we can't warp back to the start of Gale Tunnel, so we actually have to take the little teleporter thing from Magma Worm. Um, but now we are just heading south to the next grace and um, put on the dagger that has Storm Stomp. Don't die a hero trying to kill this, <laughs> this fucking scarab. Um, I think this is also spliced in original footage from the first take because uh, I think on the second take I was like, ah, it's fine, it's, fuck it, I'll just um, like it, I'll just hit it, and I, I couldn't hit it. So yeah, get the storm stomp out to make fight uh, to to make hitting the scarab thing a lot easier. So look for the little uh, little trail, and when it starts, when it's about to pass, just start spamming stomp. Other good Ashes of War you can use to do that sort of thing. Funnily enough, Flame of the Red Mains that we just got from uh, killing that Scarab, that is the most tragic, heartbreaking story of an Ash of War in the entire game. Um, yeah, that it was used the... to do like 40 stance damage on hit, and now it does 7.5. Yeah, pathetic, Flame of the Red Mains it used to be what this guide was going to use for the full game. Uh, I'm glad it took... I'm glad I never started recording that version of the guide. Um... Now, up this hill, you notice there's a big purple rain attack thing coming down. Now, it's coming from this guy. Now, this guy is one of the Red Main Knights. So, he is exactly like the other knights of the same kit, like the Cuckoo Knights or the, the Limgrave Knights or whatever. Uh, so, they can drop the armor set. So, like, the Helm, the Armor, the Gauntlets, the Greaves, the, the Knight's Greatsword, the Partisan, the Great Bow, and the Red Main Great Shield. And now we're just uh, going up to Castle Redmain, where we're going to get a very important Ash of War that we use extensively later on in the game. No, we're not at Castle Redmain. This is Fort Gale. Is this Castle Redmain get... is on... Is this, this is, where is the place where we get Lion's Claw, Yeah. but this is not Redmain Castle. Oh, it's Fort Gale. Right, this never mind. Fort Gale. I'm, yeah. I'm, uh... <laughs> Talking absolute dog shit. As you can see down there, though, there is a lion guardian enemy. We fought one of those while we were in uh, Stormville. Stormville Castle. Yeah, thank you. Um, and they're kind of a pain in the ass to fight. You can sort of cheese this one sort if you're of, careful about yeah. it. Um, but it is probably just easier to summon and fight it the normal way. Now, these red main soldiers are actually... This is the... Um the Lord Sworn Shield that I was talking about. Now again, Aslan is really good. Uh, you just have to time it a little bit better when it comes to the Great Shield guys, but otherwise, was taken care of that night, no problem. And uh, that is the uh, Star Scourge Talisman. Yeah, the Star Scourge Heirloom that gives you plus five strength while equipped. So cool. it's one of the four talismans I'd mentioned in a previous part, but jumping over this little barrier, grab some, is that mushrooms? It is mushrooms, yeah. Yeah, grab some mushrooms. They're a crafting item. Use them to make uh, like fire bombs and such. Yeah. Pull the lever at the far end of this. Um, that opens the little uh, the little gate down in the pit. Um, in this room is the katar. It's a fist weapon. Um, pretty Not good. The country. No. Uh <laughs> Not the con distinctly not the entire nation of Qatar in that <laughs> chest. Um, but yeah. Summon in the imps, they're just going to go straight in. Immediately go to town on this fucking thing. Look at them. Look at them go. Heroes. Um, this is the worst, for a time worst enemy design in the game. I just hate the way they look. What? But, the, the lion guardians? Yeah, the gay lion. But anyway, so we're just going to pepper this thing with arrows. I mean, you can just go down and ask slam if you want. We're just showing you the fact that you can do it this way. Use ask slam just... Oh, there's hilariously the, the the good technique for fighting these things is actually lion's claw uh with a weapon that we get later on in the game otherwise it's they just they just jump about so much the enemies that jump about a lot in this game i just feel it's like there's just such an incredible pain in the ass we don't even have lightning bolt which would be another great alternative for killing those things from that position anyway 
But otherwise, we're now um, back round the back of um, Fort Gale, and now we are just gonna quickly yoink, and we're just we're not fighting those fucking things. Now that's Flame Grant Me Strength, which is effectively kind of like Golden Vow. It stacks with Golden Vow, and it gives you a little buff, which is cool. It gives you a buff to your physical damage and your fire damage, um, which means it would work really well with the Magma Worm Scale Sword that we got. Um, that we get in the future, but also in the last episode? <laughs> Question yes. mark? Um, <laughs> when we said it stacks with Golden Vow, that means you can cast both either the Ash of War Golden Vow or the Spell Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength and have both effects active at the same time, just in case yes. you were unaware of what stacking buffs means in a Souls game. Now, uh, just to make a point, hopefully you noticed that we picked up a smith and stone off a body that was sitting on a chair down the hill, and then we came back up here. Just hope you're paying attention to that. But otherwise, we're heading east back to the main road, and lo and behold, we are back here, which is the grace that was south of the ruins. And I think now we are just going to follow the beaten path on the road to the next grace. Oh, no, no, we're going to go to the uh, the secret hidden, like, the, the rock cave effectively i think we're going to do that first yeah um outside the rock cave on the way to the rock cave you're going to bump into an abductor virgin um there it is this is how you know you're in the right spot then you walk across the you know, little vines or branches here and then you're in the abandoned cave now this is i would say probably the most important cave in caleb for one reason and one reason alone, and that is the reward you get for defeating the boss. Now, you can make this cave significantly less painless. There is... Oh, sorry. Uh, more painless <laughs> than... <laughs> less pain... Yeah, we're going to make it harder. No. <laughs> you can make this cave relatively painless by making sure you have Flame Cleanse Me, as well as some weapon with the Quick Step Ash of War. So be it a dagger without anything on it, which I think is what we end up using. Uh, um, oh no, we actually, yeah, we, we actually have uh, quick step as an Asher Wall. So, um, the rot on the floor here, um, and you can see these geysers. You want to avoid getting hit by the geysers because they do damage. But we're quick stepping through the rot because if you're walking through it, you move considerably slower. Yeah. Um, no. Grab some dragon. Highly recommend. Grease. Like seriously, just. Do, do not bother doing this place unless you have flame, uh, flame Cleanse Me. You should have enough equipment at this point, no matter what your stats are, to be able to stack a bunch of shit in order to be able to cast Flame Cleanse Me just to get through this place. It's just not worth going through that many consumables just to do this area because you're going to have you to be curing your rot like 10 times easily. I want to make a point and say that you can get through this cave without getting rotted. It's not easy, but you can do it. Um, we picked up the Serpent Bow there. That is a longbow class weapon with Mighty Shot built in, and it imbues every shot you fire with poison. A um, very and fucking means... small amount of poison, though. It's just it, to a point that it's almost not even worth it, but it does do that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it would be better if that scaled with Arcane so that it increased <laughs> yeah, it the rate be. at which poison built up but unfortunately it doesn't. Now in this room, there are a bunch of Aeonian butterflies um, around the Miranda flower in the middle of the room. Jumping up this, you get another one of my favorite weapons, the Venomous Fang, which inflicts a very, very potent form of poison. It doesn't last very long, but it does a lot of damage. And since it attacks so fast, it's great to just have in your back pocket. No need to fight these enemies. We are straight onto the boss, which is the Clean Rot Knight Duo. Which is, I mean, you can barely be even considered a boss, honestly. But, you know, again, them are going to do, do as well. Um, and although they are clean rot knights, I don't think, I think because they're bosses, they don't drop loot. Yeah, that's right. Um, but if they if they were normal enemies, they could drop the clean knight's sword if they were using it. The clean, lights, the clean rot knight's spear if they're using it. The halo scythe if they're using it. And then the armor the helmet, the gauntlets, the greaves. They can also apparently drop Trina's lilies and uh, Michaela's lilies as well. But otherwise, you're going to do the, the usual of um, Physic Flask on, Golden Vow on, Imps out, and then just start dropping your arse on them. Because, uh... Now, these guys are actually surprised, like, more resilient than 
other enemies with that kind of blocking technique that they have. So they're a little harder to pancake, but they can be pancaked. So. <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as with everything so far, the strategy is just let the imps distract it and then flatten it with your ass. Yeah. Um, if you did want to fight them straight up, an option we could have had access to here is Blood Flame Blade because they are weak to bleed and they are also exceptionally weak to fire. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but it looked as though the Clean Rock Knight had a damage buff there. And that happens if something gets uh, rotted or poisoned near it. Now, the reason this cave was so important, as I said, is because of that item we just got, the Golden Scarab. That gives you 20% more runes from everything you kill. So... That's from bosses, that's from regular enemies, and what that amounts to is 20% faster leveling. Which means you'll be tougher, quicker, and everything from there will be easier. Now back at that grace south of the ruins, or just north of the ruins, west of the ruins? Near the ruins! You're gonna follow the road, ignoring the enemies along the way, and then I think from here we veer off to the left-hand side and grab a scarab. Yep. Uh, this one has it's an incantation of some sort. Life steel fist? Fucking insane. Insane. Five years worth of CIA torture, and I could never have told you that even existed. So now we are resting at this grace here. Oh, apparently, we're just grabbing the grace and I'm going to rest at it. But there's a little merchant here. This merchant's specifically fantastic because this guy sells infinite fire arrows. Yeah, so he's one of the ones where we've mentioned before. Um, Killing the merchants gives you their bell bearing. You can take that to the Twin Maiden Husks. It's useful to have all your arrows in one place at any given time. So having them all available from the same vendor would be useful. So he's one of the candidates for might actually be worth killing this dude. There's a grace just to the... Uh, what are we? Just to the north of him? Uh, um, I mean, it's past. crazy that there's a grace there and then there's also a grace like just slightly up here. Those are That's two very close together graces. That's unnecessary, I think. Yeah, I think the reason that one down there is there, by the way, is because of the invasion that happens in the Aeonian Swamp. Yeah, which maybe. Which we'll get to. Heading across the road, though, there is another set of runes. Uh, this set of runes is filled with... So there's a rock crease there, pick that up. Now, we don't want to be in this rune for very long because this is filled with um, Kindred of Rot. Uh, now, these guys can drop um, the Pest Slave and Faded Early Flower and Aeonian Butterflies. Now, at, at the bottom here, uh, I got massively ganged up on. So try to have that not happen. Again, really, I should just be firing a ground slam out in these situations. You tried right at the end there, but you were poisoned. You'd already taken so much damage. You actually died mid-air using ground slam. Now, that was a much smoother example of what's supposed to happen, but we did get the meteoric ore blade. Uh, it's a katana-class weapon. It deals gravity damage, um, which is basically just magic damage as well as physical damage. Um, it has the unique heavy attack among the katanas. It basically has the Ichimonji from Sakira, if you're familiar with that. Um, oh, and sure. its Ash of War is Gravitas, which I've talked about before. We get the, like, swappable version of that from the old man in underwear on the beach in Limgrave, and it's useful for pulling flying enemies out of the air. Such as those annoying bats and birds. So now we're out of that fucking hellhole. Thankfully there's barely anything in it. Uh, we're going to use two of our precious stone sword keys to enter this place. That I can't remember. Jail tunnel. Or jail cave, rather. Yeah, I, I knew that. I know you knew that. I know. <laughs> so, activating this grace here, and then there's a little chest that has a rune arc in it? That sounds right. So, we're currently 30, 35 vigor, 30 endurance, so now we'll be leveling our uh, vigor up to 40. Now, this place is kind of one of the slightly more interesting caves. I mean, as far as Elden Ring caves can be interesting, this is one of the slightly more interesting ones. Yet again, it's another cave that links two major areas. 
Um, although the boss isn't a magma worm this time, I promise. No, it's not. Although, what is the boss of this area? Grave Warden Duelist. Well, it's actually worse than a magma worm. But yeah, so going down that little that passage through the floor, then we're heading west into this room here. Uh, basically, you have to do like you have to open the jail doors first. So we're just kind of like blasting through this area quickly because uh, you have to kind of get to the end and then explore it and then do the boss. So as you saw there, we just fought a couple of vulgar militiamen. There's a few of them scattered about in this area. Um, they can drop the Volga Militia Saw, Volga Militia Shotel, um, the entire Volga Militia armor set, so that's helmet, gauntlets, greaves, and chest piece. Um, and I believe that's all they can drop. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, wow, I actually didn't even have that on the list of stuff for drops, but uh, yes, I think you're correct there. Uh, yep, so the, the full armor set and the saw or the Shotel, depending on the weapon that they're using. Uh, yeah. So we picked up uh, some go a Golden Rune 4, a Turtleneck, uh, a Golden Rune 1. I think I dropped off the, the rat. But, yeah, uh, they can drop Golden Runes and occasionally Rune Arcs, which is nice. They're your farming source for Rune Arcs if you ever run out. So yeah, this is the Vol Volga Militia guy. That's the saw there we picked up in the, in the previous part. So there's a Golden Rune, there's a, a scroll. I think it's a scroll. It didn't stone, I think. Oh. Yeah. Um, hopefully you've been following along with this so far. Um, the cave thus far has been pretty linear, but up here is the lever that opens all of the cell doors. Now, we show you every cell that has something in it. Yeah. Because um, not all of them do, but um, Feel this is where the cave check. can get... Yeah, this is where the cave can get kind of confusing. Now, largely you want to avoid these enemies because of that. Um yeah. These are burning putrid corpses. Um, when they do this little, they do a scream and oh, grab the pillory shield there. That actually boosts your death light resistance while equipped. So useful thing to have in your back pocket. Um, they do a little scream. They swell up, run towards you and explode. Now they can hit each other with that. So if one of them does it and a bunch of them do it at the same time, as long as you avoid the explosion of one of them, it will knock the others over and stop them from doing it. Um, which is a useful little thing to know. Um, as I said, we're only really going to the caves, uh, the cells, sorry, with something in them. Um, grabbing the gold rune like, there. No, a, a, the big one is coming up here now. Um, I think it has a stone that... sword key, the wa Wakazashi. And I don't know what the third item is. Golden, Golden room. Four. And then that other room was just filled with those guys, so yeah, you can just ignore that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, although it is kind of funny to watch them kill each other trying to kill you. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so some more items here, and then yes, yeah, so thankfully this place is fairly short, to be honest. But to get to the boss, you need to smash through this little barricade here. So it kind of looks like oh, well, there's just nothing here. But nah. So then we can make be some careful top downs. actually when you smash through because. If you do smash through and roll straight off the edge, you might just plummet to your death. So just take a bit of care when you're doing that. But so, yeah, Grave Warden Grave Duelist. Duelist uh, very easy because uh, he dies to uh, pretty much everything we've got going on. Yeah, bleed and your ass, As you can see, yep. blood ass. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the blood arse build. The... <laughs> <laughs> Anal bleeding bill. <laughs> Aye. But yeah, this is just like the, the amount of coverage that just these two things can accomplish in this game is just, just kind of crazy. And then we've got the putrid corpse ashes, which I can't imagine that's particularly good because it's ashes that are just going to blow up. But otherwise, we get the reg regalia of Eokid. Regalia of Yokaid. Um,. It's a weapon that scales with arcane strength and dexterity, um, so it's decent for an arcane build. It's Ash of War, can be boosted by anything that boosts multiple hit attacks, so things like the Winged Sword Insignias or Millicent's Prosthesis. And if you stack a bunch of these buffs together, you can make that Ash hit incredibly hard. It takes a long time to pull it off. You won't be able to do it straight away, but when you can do it, 
it's fantastic. A very good weapon. So now we're heading south along the beaten path to the uh, the Cathedral of Dragon Communion. On the way, we are going to grab this grace here, and then there's a couple of items from here that we're going to grab on the way to the Cathedral. So up here is a Starlight Shard. Again, we've mentioned don't use any of these. You can consume them to regain FP, but they are in fact actually a currency for Soluvus, and not to you don't need it to finish his quest but you do i think you do need to buy one of his things off him actually um to get the rest of them so there's literally yeah, just, right. just don't use them okay uh otherwise once though, you've finished syllabus's quest though feel free to use them if you're running short on fp in a boss fight or something they oh yeah that's true. just a yeah. resource you can use so once you've gotten everything from them whatever you have left is free game yeah Otherwise, up this massive uh, mushroom mound to the east of the road, I think. Um, there's just a couple of golden runes back onto the road. We are heading south now, up the hill, and uh, there's a mass grave up there that you can kind of see in the corner. And at this mass grave, you're going to encounter some of the wandering noble type enemies. And we've said on multiple occasions, they can drop the variations of their armor set, including the variations of the headpieces, as well as the gauntlets, greaves, and chest piece, um, as well as the noble's estoc, the noble's slender sword, which if you get one to drop, take a photograph of it because it's insanely rare. <laughs> um, yeah. Not particularly difficult to kill. They can also drop varying crafting items and consumables and such the like um and there is one of them in particular that you saw kneeling down at the end that you want to avoid hitting at all costs because like a couple of other enemies this one here when killed transforms into troll. something else now again we are particularly well equipped for the trolls because they've got glass ankles like a lot of enemies and are weak to bleed so we just hit them with our arse and then go to town on them, and that is how you kill trolls nice and easily. Um, now, I think specifically those were the common nobles in this area, of which they'll drop the Slender Sword and the Aristocrat Garb. Yeah. Uh, there's no sorcerers, or I think the old nobles are specifically the ones that have the horn, so there's none of them. Um, and then the one with the s stock is the noble soldier, and that's the ones that have the hat, the coat as well. But otherwise, we're heading southeast-ish to the uh, cathedral. Oh, is it Cathedral Dragon Communion? Pretty sure it is. Yeah, it is. Yes. Um, Apparently, it in is. here, you caught a glimpse of him as you rode past. That's a banished knight. We've said before they can drop their entire armor set and the weapon they're wielding, so the sword or the loading screen. Um, yeah, they can drop the sword, the shield, the halberd. Um, and the full armor set, and they will drop the armor pieces they're wearing. Now, we interacted with the altar, and we spent our first... Oh! <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> Bit of a time jump there. <laughs> yeah, okay, so... I'm, a, I'm assuming a lot of people are going to want to know how the fuck to do this dragon, right? And, um... This is... So, this is way later. This is our setup for defeating this guy. And, um... The, the method to do it is using the Great Lance plus Spectral Lance Ash of War. Now, you don't even need to upgrade the Great Lance. Um, now, this you actually have these things on our equipment currently. So, you could do this in theory. It, you're just going to have to be a little bit more careful with your healing and stuff like that. But, other, and you, and, but the technique is essentially the same, right? So, chuck these at this thing's head. Thankfully, they, they kind of track a little bit. And... Um, the third one will knock it on its arse, and then you are going to... What you're going to do is you're going to use... Well, so specifically we're using Bloodblade, which we don't have yet. So you can come back once you have Bloodblade. Uh, but otherwise, you can just go to town on its face with the katanas, inflict bleed as necessary. Um, make sure you've got access to uh, Flame Cleanse Me to get rid of the rot. This is easily, I would say, the hardest uh, dragon in the game. Uh, or at least tied hardest with this one and the one in the mountaintops of the giants. But otherwise, again, you know, three three well-laden um, lances to the face, and then you can just go to town 
and bleed it out. Now, Blood Blade is extremely fantastic for bleeding things out. It's fuck. It's fucking amazing. Uh, you could swap Blood Blade, however, with uh, what is it called? The dagger. Um, Reduvia. I was just about to say, actually, we yes. do technically have access to Blood Blade at this stage in the game. Um, but specifically the Reduvia's Blood Blade Dash of War on the weapon of the same name. You know what? Fuck it. I actually did get footage using the Reduvia. So I just wanted to get this footage in here to show you that it can be done using the Lance plus Reduvia. As you can see, it's the same normal three hits with the Lance. This build is wearing the same armor set, it's fairly low stats compared to the last clip that you saw. But clearly, you know, un this is unupgraded Reduvia. Now, once you get your uh, your first flurry in, you want to get the fuck out of there. Basically, this whole strategy hinges on the fact that you can reposition yourself like what I'm doing here. So, as you saw, you know, staggered him, got the hits in, and then ran. But then what you want to do is get behind him. Because when he turns around, he's going to start using the physical attacks. And that's the point that you want to capitalize on. Uh, so as you can see, I'm getting a little bit of space here. And now that I'm behind him and he's turned around, this is exactly where I want to be. So you want to be setting your position up like this. Even when, even if you come back here and you're a lot stronger and you don't need to do this quite as many, you know, each cycle as many times. I think I probably have to get at least three or four in for this. But as you can see, this is totally doable with the Spectral Lance. Andrew Duvy, you just need to be a lot more careful if you're going to do it at this point in the game. Now, a little bit ago, before we uh, cut to that clip, we spent our first Dragonheart at the uh, altar in the Cathedral of Dragon Communion, and we bought the Rotten Breath incantation. Yes, now this is the reason for why we went to 12 Faith, 15 Arcane, or maybe the other way about, maybe 15 Faith, 12 Arcane. Um, specifically, Rotten Breath is one of the reasons for this, uh, because it is fantastic for just getting a whole bunch of free extra damage on certain bosses. And uh, we'll be utilising that throughout the rest of the game. Uh, so yes, uh, here's the merchant that we were at right at the start of the game. We're going to buy his crackpot and his uh, cooking book now. This is the one where we got the Great Helm from. Uh, when we got transported here from Limgrave. Now I just want to quickly, just to reiterate when it comes to the big dragon. You've got the lance. You've got Spectral Lance, but the Great Lance specifically, Spectral Lance, and then you can also use Reduvia's Blood Blade, Ash of War, uh, to essentially do what we've done there. Um, hopefully you can fall... That, that's the method for fighting the dragons. Um, and it's fantastic, easily the best thing. So now we have to fight uh, Deathbird. So we're going to get our set up for that. Uh, which is Death Sacred Right Blade. Bird specifically, which is why we've also changed out the Physic. Where for yes. regular Deathbirds we normally wouldn't, this Deathbird is considerably tougher than the ones we fought so far. It has access to its full and expanded moveset. You'll see it straight away after transitioning to nighttime. You should see the burning wings in the distance. Um, or should see the burning wings there in the distance. Go. There he is. Yeah, um, you can cheese this by standing up on the little, I say little, on the enormous skull in the cliff face there. Um, you can sort of cheese this, but as you can see, it leaves Ghost Flame all over the floor. That can inflict Frostbite on you. And despite being called Ghost Flame, it does deal magic damage. Um, Sacred Blade tearing it up, as it always does, because Deathbirds are incredibly weak to it. But here you're seeing its sort of Rain of Arrows attack. This is most intense towards the center and spreads out in a ring. Um, so when you see it start to cast that, run away from it. This is a great opportunity. It was about to do a big Ghost Flame explosion. Um, that's a great opportunity to get a Sacred Blade off. And your reward is the Death's Poker, which is an exceptionally good weapon for an intelligence build because it gives you access to Ghost Flame Ignition, the um, ability it was using on you. So you can spread a trail of Ghost Flame on the floor in front of you, which is probably the stronger of the two um, moves you can do with its Sash of War. Or you can use the Explosion, which is the heavy attack, which uh, can knock enemies back and also likewise inflict Frostbite. It's an exceptionally good weapon. Kaelid is really weighing you down with exceptionally good gear, and a lot of this is technically accessible right from the start of the game. So if you wanted to use any of this in, in specific, you can come and get it early, but it will be hard to get. Correct. Well, well said. So specifically though, that was the um, the holy damage buff crystal tier, and I think it's the dex crystal tier. No, the one that increases. No, our faith. it'd be the faith. 
Yeah, so the Faith, Faith Knot tier, and Holy Shrouding. And then we also put on the Sacred Scorpion Charm, which also further increases our Holy Damage. Um, just to confirm that. Uh, so, the two tiers, the Holy Damage buff, the Faith buff, and the Sacred Scorpion Charm, and Sacred Blade, that's the way to go for the Death Fight Bird. Now, we are back to fighting another fucking Black Knight, which, sadly, we don't have the correct equipment still for fighting these things. Um, the way they move about is insanely annoying. Um, maybe Blood Flame's Blade would be better. It's it's hard to tell. Ugh, God, I really hate fighting these things. It's really just a, until we get the, the the correct equipment, that being the... Is it just Wooden Great Shield in this game? It's the Icon Shield. Until we get the Icon Shield and until we get Lightning Bolt, Ash of War, it's... Uh, we just have to do this the old-fashioned way, where we are avoiding its attacks, waiting for it to attack, and then getting or hitting with a like a, just a, an opportunity opening, really. Um, so yeah, we're just fighting these guys just kind of old school, and you just kind of have to get a feel for it if you're doing it this way. I really, it's really there is no solid technique, and we've tried so many different ways that is like, oh, here here's the way that's going to do a big chunk of damage. There's just nothing. Um, and the thing is, this method, this method is good. It's consistent. It works. You you block their damage. You respond with attacks when it when it finally stops fucking moving. the The problem we had with it is that it takes forever because yes. they run around so much. Now Thunderbolt and the Icon Shield, as well as stacking as many lightning damage buffs as you can get your hands on, um, it largely eliminates this problem because it gives you an excellent ranged option that inflicts their weakest defense, lightning. Yes. Um, Not only that, it, because of the way it, it works, it just it fires like a vertical shot down the way. So even when it's moving, it hits most of the time, and you don't need to be close to it to actually hit it with it. So, and then when you com combine it with a shield, the shield has like a ton of stability. So, and it's light, and it gives you a little bit of health regen. So it just has like a lot of small positives that all add up to being like a really good technique for fighting these things but otherwise once you've finally knocked off the horse you just go to town with it because they're they're easy at this point but as we've said before this is just showing you like yeah you can kill this thing now with like a pain in the ass way of doing it you get the moth flight ash of war poison moth flight rather but what we'd probably recommend is if you can't be arsed fighting these things just come back later once you have the shit we said. But this is now it for Caleb part one, essentially. Uh, we're back at um, the round table hold and we're just going to level up a little bit. But otherwise, that's basically it. So we're going to sell our runes because we have a ton of them. And then we can uh, upgrade our weapon. So we've got enough Smith and Stone 5s. Now both our weapons are using Smith and Stone 5. We're going to use our Smith and Stone 4s to upgrade the bow. Um, which may or may not be a good idea because we do change our weapon later on in the game admittedly so those lower smith and stone levels might be worthwhile but otherwise we level up to 37 vigor we're going back to swamp ionia and that is it for part 17 of elden ring the ultimate guide and okay there we go that's caleb part one done join us in part 18 where we're going to be doing caleb part two now other than liking and subscribing you can follow us on twitter you can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.